Okay, welcome to Crime Page of Biden. It does in good morning from the west coast of the North Island of New Zealand. We're looking at Mount Teriyaki, about a little over a million year old Andesitic volcanic cone. Wonderful example of those, those very conical Andesitic eruptions. Remember, Andesite is unlike basalt. It doesn't flow so easily, so you get a buildup, all right? Not like, it's not a shield volcano. It doesn't tend to splatter out and stay flat. It gets pretty conical. And we got a wonderful uh, almost semi-lenticular cloud going around. See, looking like a little UFO. Now, if this were Northern California, a lot of the wing nuts and lunatics up there would think that there's uh, aliens coming out of that volcano, and that's why the cloud is there. But, uh, you know, that's what happens when you don't fund your education system properly. Uh, anyway, or you just, uh, maybe, I, I don't want to blame, hate to blame acid, but it could be that, too. Or just, you know, some sort of, uh, tending to fill some sort of void with quasi fake spirituality who knows anyway regardless uh wonderful example of an andesitic lava cone let's, let's go check it out see what kind of things are growing along it, and explore some of the geology as well now as you could see we see all this cleared pasture land and that was what it once looked like what we're about to go into you've got some very impressive decritium compressinum the rimu up there see with that pendant foliage and we've also got a sign warning no dogs under any circumstances. I don't care if your dog is your driver, your chauffeur, if it's your dog's birthday party. There's no exceptions. You cannot bring a dog in there if it's in your car. So you got to leave them out here. Okay? Just, you know, I don't know. I guess they want you to time to the fence or something. Anyway, what we're entering is what all of that used to look like before they cleared it for agriculture. So, uh... Very interesting to note, this is what much of the North Island of New Zealand was covered in. Podocarp forest, towering rimus, probably halocarpus in the understory, uh, some uh, podocarpus species in the understory, cyathea tree fern species, maybe a hint of nothophagus, astelia uh, growing epiphytically on everything, as well as uh, quite a few Aureliaceae species, most notably in the genus Pseudopanic. So let's go check it out. Yo, dude, I'm like about to get up in this fucking tube, dude. Like DK, it's like next level dopeness, dude. Like, what does DKC stand for? Like, eighth element of hip hop, dude. Anyway, looking at this uh, wonderful diversity of lichens, beard lichens, all kind of crust leaf lichens, and what the shit dangling on this uh, this piece of uh, fence, this piece of wood right here. Look at that, though. You could just tell how humid and cool it is. Very wonderful atmosphere for the lichen to grow in. Alan, you ever been filmed pissing before? Uh, not that I know of, but it could have happened without me knowing. Don't ask me to pay you. Anyway, <laughs> look at a wonderful, all these, how many different species of lichen you got here? How many different species? Uh, gotta be dozens. Dozens of species. Of, oh, what's that? You even got some bryophytes down there. There's some algae tears, Trentopolia aurea. Where do you see that? Coincidence. What's this algae you said? Trentopolia aurea. It's a lovely color to it. Yeah. A lot of protective pigments going on right there. You can see we're traversing a one lane road. Uh, it's basically just been cut through thick forest. This is what most of the uh, area looked like. One wonders how one might have gotten through without the use of a uh, giant uh, tractor such as you see there. One wonders how people may have navigated through these forests back in the day, i.e., you know, two, three hundred years ago. Or if they even did. I mean, probably there was just a couple trails people used and and uh, just relied on those. But it's it's very, very thick forest here. Almost seemingly impenetrable. Oh, that's nice. That's a nice view. Well, I think these are some nice green folios lichens. Rather large, too. Look at how it wobbles. Look at them little cups. What's going on there? You producing spores, huh? Quite lovely. You know, I'm a little concerned at how dark and shady this forest is. I should really put some safety lighting on here, you know, because someone could get hurt. See, that's what they got to do because it just overgrows so quick. See that? It's not bad. It's like a shaver for the forest. And speaking of basal angiosperms, Pseudowinthera colorata is a member of the family Winteraceae. Look at the undersides of those leaves. Look at those bright white abaxial surfaces. Got a very peppery and pleasant smell to it. Winteraceae is primarily southern hemisphere. And again, it's one of the uh, 
early branching lineages of angiosperms. Many of them are known for their volatile leaf oils. You can see it's just growing as an understory shrub in this uh, rather damp forest. What is that? What is that? It's a totara with a just covered in, in bryophytes. Holy hell. Let's bleck them. Blech. Look at that spicy volcanic rock being cut so smoothly like butter by this fast moving water. That's got to be very frigid, uh, <laughs> very frigid currents, huh? Phlegmariurus. Look, it's a dangling phlegmariurus. God, the light is really rough. Sorry about that. You can see it's got sporophylls. It's got, it's got bryophytes going on too. Speaking of bryophytes, this is another bryophyte. Bryophytes in New Zealand don't fuck around. All right, this is a coalescent stalked bryophyte, a stalked non-vascular plant that I'm twirling ever so gracefully. God, it's, it's just incredible. And this is the one of like, one of quite a few species of stalked mosses. Dendroligotrichum tangariroense, if you could spit that out. Loving is blechnum. And of course, since it's a blechnum, it's breaking up reproduction and photosynthesis. And so you get these sporophylls. Leaves that are just produced for the sake of producing spores. Just don't see any chlorophyll in there. You can see how dark that leaf is. And there's those revolute margins on those actual sporophyll leaflets. Just creeping along the ground nice. Ah, that pepper tree. Ooh, it's spicy. Takes a minute for it to kick in, but it certainly does. Can mildly taste the saffron in those leaves too. This is hilarious. Wine mania, Cunoniaceae. I've never seen such massive trees in this family. You can see this thing is huge. Look at it. Of course, just covered in bryophytes. Very tiny seeds. Very easy to colonize fresh volcanic flows. This is a nice fern. Another weird ass fern. Kind of feels like it's made out of plastic, like it might be. You know, an acrylic fern you'd see in someone's fruit bowl in their, you know, in their dining room or something. I guess if you're hanging out with the kind of lame ass who uses uh, plastic plants. No judgment. Anyway, Leptosporus is the genus there. You could see those sporangia. Yeah, the light's kind of shit. You can't really see them. But uh, there's sporangia on the undersides. Almost easily mistaken for a filmy fern. Almost kind of looks like seaweed, too. Look at those fronds. Look at how semi-translucent they are. All right, only resides in the dark, moist nether regions of the forest. Let's see that. See how they taper at the base too. See, they're kind of like a, almost an ovate shaped leaf. Let's even get a nice money shot of those uh, sporangia. See those little orange beads right there? Yeah, the light's kind of shit. There you go. See that? You see those rather large? Sorry, actually, probably not because the light is shit and I can't feel. Yeah, there you go. Hopefully you get an idea. It looks like it's a damn aquatic plant that uh, turned into a fern. Pretty cool. Again, notice that the ground here is all pumice, okay? So we're basically hiking on an old lahar, an old volcanic mud flow. Looking up, you could see it's all, it's just all wine mania. Which they changed the genus recently. But uh, it's all the same species of uh, Cunoniaceae, which is a family you don't really get. Uh, in North America. You get a couple species in Mexico, I believe, but I've seen it in the Dominican Republic, too. Beautiful forest. Very dark, very cool, very moist. See, they got these traps because they got all kind of invasive stoats and, uh, you know, other things, uh, invasive possums. The possums kill the trees brought over from Australia. The stoats will prey on some of the cool, the cool birds like the kiwi. That's why they don't want these jackasses coming here letting their dogs run off leash you know letting their bad dogs chase stuff and you know don't get me wrong and i'm all for off leash dogs but they gotta at least respond to you gotta have them under your control they can't be running around killing stuff so they decided not to even risk it and not even let people bring their dogs in the park which i think is a good idea because you get those little kiwis those cute little bastards they just get murked by you know some jackasses hound that just runs off can't help itself but kill one you know now this species of Astelia is making damn sure that its fruits get noticed by frugivorous birds. That is, you know, birds that are all the way down the ground looking for stuff to eat by having those conspicuous droops. So you did lots of species of Astelia, cool monocot in the order Asparagales down here in the Southern Hemisphere. 
And here's a cool plant I took a liking to, another understory plant, Carpoditis serratus from the family Rusiaceae, which is interestingly enough in the sunflower family order Asterales. Another family I haven't even seen and wasn't even really aware of unless I was looking at that damn uh, massive angiosperm phylogeny cladogram that I got on my wall. Great tool to explore the diversity of plant life. Anyway, that aside, you can see it's got serrate margins on those leaves. It's got that cool divaricate zigzag branching pattern. The adult leaves look much different and flip it over. You got that beautiful, illustrious purple vein. And again, those serrate margins on the leaves, just giving it the species epithet serratus. So Alan, what do we have here? I see we have a sapotroph eating the remains of this uh, rotting tree trunk. Yeah, this sapotroph has a very viscid cap, like it's covering the layer of slime, and it's growing on wood with dark brown spores. So this is foliota. It's a foliota. Okay, you want to shine a black light on it and see uh, what it looks like. Wow, that really lights up. That's extremely fluorescent. So it's got a it's got a secondary metabolite in it. It's uh, turning that UV light into visible light. Something that takes these high energy UV photons and re-releases them as lower energy green photons. Look at it. It's a Totara fruit, but it's not really a fruit because it's not a flowering plant. It's a conifer, so that's a, a megastrobilus. But you can see the podocarpium, which is that flashy red thing, the actual seed, the megastrobilus, is that green part. And of course, the bird comes down attracted to that red shit right there, swallows the seed whole, ends up pooping it out somewhere, and you get uh, potentially a new uh, podocarpus totara which of course, this is a juvenile. They can be about, I don't know, 30 times uh, this diameter. Look at this, look, we got, look, so we got Dracophyllum filifolium right here, forming this nice small tree with very dense foliage. Again, Ericaceae, the Apacrid subfamily, that is a Dracophyllum. If you know the genus Dracophyllum, this'll damn near blow your mind. Just looks like a tree made out of grass. Looks, looks almost like a big ass uh, sedge or something. Look at this species of Brachyglottis, all right? That's, a, that's an aster. It's a senesioid composite. Glaber subtop, velvety, down below. Oh, no, it's not velvety. It's glabers down below, too. Oh, what's going on with that, huh? See, there's the spent inflorescences, the spent capitula on the senesioid, this Brachyglottis eleagnifolia, because the leaves look uh, kind of like an eleagnus. Just the bright white and a glabrous on the underside. And here's a species of Veronica, all right? New Zealand, I believe, is the world center for diversity in a genus Veronica. Unfortunately, the genus Veronica has been ruined for me by horticultural atrocities in California. I really associate them with their kind of Home Depot plants in California. You see them planted in front of like new, uh, new condo developments that go up that are ruining your neighborhood. There's the inflorescences. It really is a shame. Look at the species of Azothamnus, too. Look at that. Another member of Astraceae. Bright white abaxial surfaces. Almost imbricate leaves. Almost looking like a conifer. Plenty of Azothamnus in Tasmania as well. Now, look at that. You got Gaultheria depressa on the ground right there. Ericaceae flushing a luscious red. You got your Brachyglottis eleagnifolia. And you got your Dracophyllum. Looking like a case of pubes that never got trimmed almost. Like, like some, almost looks like a restio. Crazy to think it's actually in a pack red. Would love to see it in flower. Down there, you just have a whole, just a, a, a it's a birthday bash of native avian fauna. You can hear it down there. Somebody's having a birthday party today. Happy birthday down there. Happy birthday to you, however. Look at the landslides over there. That's just a bit of slip or two, yes. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah, there's one or two slips. It's not that bad. Where's my gimp outfit? Look, we got Azothamnus, that same Azothamnus, Leptophilus blooming. Look at those tiny flowers. It's a paper daisy, one of the Nephalioid bastards, which is so species rich. That whole tribe is so species rich down here in the southern hemisphere. Lots of really cool ones in Australia and South Africa. Look, it looks like a little woody juniper. With tiny seeds, little tiny, tiny windborne seeds when it's going off. You know, I just can't get over how many times I've seen Veronica planted in front of condos in California. So, you know, I'm really sorry. It's not your fault, guy. Anyway, as we look down here, check out this cool lobelia. This is the fruit. It's not blooming, but these pink fruits are obviously going for bird dispersal. This is lobelia angulata, companulaces, the family there. 
pretty wild. You ever seen a little billy with a nice little berry? Quite a few of them do that actually, but especially in New Zealand where so many have adapted to bird dispersal. See, there's the leaves that it's just the prostrate crawling lobelia. Used to be in a genus Prati. I like lobelia more. White flowers when it's going off, and of course you got that little uh, uh, broom-looking thing that uh, that pollen presenter that comes out from in between those two top petals. Look at a form on this brachyglottis, just resembling a little uh, bonsai tree. Anyway, check out this carrot, this high elevation carrot, Anisotomy down there, Anisotomy aromatica, APAC carrot family. Smells much like parsley and kind of looks like parsley as well, a little rosette of those uh, tiny leaflets. Now, the nice thing about being up here is there's no lodge to get banned from, okay? They can't throw you out the lodge. We are in a cloud, though, and if uh, they didn't have this... Uh, you know, perpetually masticated walkway that we're standing on right now. It'd just be dense vegetation. It'd be very hard to get through there. And you could see Mount Teriyaki is in a cloud right now. See that? You know, they told me that it's pronounced Mount Teriyaki, but Teriyaki sounds nicer and it sounds delicious. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going with that. Beautiful andesitic corn. And of course we got a pseudopanax. Okay, the up high pseudopanax. Showing those uh, inflated petiole bases, as well as the old abscission scars where the former leaf blades, the palmate leaf blades, have fallen off. So glabrous. Glabrous and apparently evergreen, like so many things, despite the chilly temperatures here in New Zealand. You can see the mastication where they come through with the masticator. Nice. That's so bizarre. It's like a big slab of andesite, like the same you'd see on Mount Shasta up north, where all the woo-woos are, uh, but it's covered in plants. But it's also not tropical here. It's a temperate rainforest. Very bizarre. Lots of evergreen. There's almost no deciduous trees despite the somewhat cold temperatures. Incredible bird life, too. And this guy right here is Urisia macrophylla plantaginaceae. And that's all I'll say about that. Long hairy petioles. An escape that's about, I don't know, 16, 18 inches high. With a white flower on it when it's going off. And what is this beautiful clump of grass? Is it the Kianaclua rubra? Just a large specimen with grasses. You don't look at the individual flowers, you look at the whole inflorescence. You just kind of got to get a feel for it. You can see the spikelets are at the end of these. It's a dense, it's a it's a long panicle. And of course that orangish color as well common grass here. I believe it's endemic to New Zealand. And there you be have it, the lovely Mount Teriyaki. You can see where those lahars and the volcanic mud flows are going to go when anything ever pops. And it will pop again. I think the last time it popped was in 1850. But a lot of cool alpine plants up there that are certainly not blooming right now. Lots of cool members of the genus Ra Raulia, which is uh, in the paper daisy tribe of Asteraceae. Lots of cool members of Stylidiaceae, the trigger plant family. A lot of good stuff up there that I'm not going to show you right now because it's cold as hell and none of it's going off. But that's a nice andesitic cone, huh? And look at that. Speaking of debris flows, look, that's good looking, man. That's what them, them lahars look like. All kinds of ash, different pieces of rock and andesite flowing down. Usually very, very fast uh, speeds. Look at that, too, the walls of that. Just, oh, it's so nice. Lots of vegetation, though. Not very diverse. Not a lot of diverse vegetation, but there's a lot of vegetation in there. Look, you got a piece of scoria for removing your bunions, you know? That's what you got to do before you go in that little snow shed in there, you know, and meet the sex troll that lives at the end of it. You got to get your bunions off, or else he's, he's going to have nothing to do with you. Anyway, here we got a species in the genus Raulia, which is... You just got to know about the genus Raulia. Very species rich here in New Zealand. Lots of cool forming cushion plants. Member of the paper daisy tribe, Nephaliaceae, Nephali, excuse me, and uh, Asteraceae. A bunch of little tiny rosettes forming them cushions, all right? Stems just short and staying, staying up at pressed close to the ground where it's warmer out the, out the, the freezing sun and stuff. Oh, that's scory at all. That's, that's, that's rough. See, look, they got a lodge up there you can get banned from. Anyway, let's look at this, this plant right here because it's very interesting. The genus here is Gunnera. 
okay, which is uh, best known for Gunnera tinctoria. This is Gunnera monoica. And uh, Gunnera tinctoria, of course, can have leaves uh, reaching diameters of six to seven feet, also known as Chilean rhubarb. Uh, but it's no relation to rhubarb. It's actually more towards the uh, the beginning of the uh, angiosperm family tree. One of the quote-unquote basal angiosperms. But So to see this rhizomatous spreading uh, herbaceous one, uh, just climbing this wall right here, is pretty, uh, pretty mind-boggling. What's going on there? Who's that? Oh, are those the fruits? Going for obvious bird dispersal? That doesn't seem right. That might be something else. Anyway, I don't want to lead you astray. Regardless, very cool to see another species of gunnera, which is so prolific in the southern hemisphere. Perhaps a Gondwanan relic. But uh, gun, uh, gunnera tinctoria, you probably know it if you live in the UK. It's uh, it can be quite invasive up there. But uh, regardless, I still love them. A lot of them have uh, nitrogen-fixing cyanobacteria. And their leaves. Mirothamnus is the only other genus in the order. Mirothamnus and Gunnera. Mirothamnus is a really cool plant from Namibia. Anyway, there you go. Gunnera monoica. How about that? That is that's hilarious. Put that in a botany textbook. Another one. I'll be using this as a reference photo on presentations, you schmuck. That is a Gunnera. That's related to Gunnera tinctoria. Same genus. Who's done a phylogeny on Gunnera? And look at that tiny fruit. That is absolutely hilarious i wonder if this has cyanobacteria uh associations at all for for the you know for the nitrogen fixation and whatnot and speaking of nitrogen fixation members of the genus coriaria do that this is a coriaria pteroides i think but there's quite a few different species of coriaria here i've, I've only seen coriaria russifolia in mexico which uh, is a rather odd looking bastard also has those opposite kind of twice pinnate the thing going on this one's reportedly quite toxic, but again, actinomycete nitrogen-fixing bacteria in the leaves. These are some of them. I don't know about this one, but uh, but possibly. Coriariaceae is the family, and a real weird one. And look on this rock wall. We got another species of Raulia right there. How about that? Another one of them paper daisies. Now, you can see they got all kind of stuff down there. See, they, it keeps getting scoured out. Not a lot of basaltic andesite. See, it's like a darker andesite. See, but it's got that chunky form still. See, isn't that nice? You get all kind of stuff up there, all kind of different stuff coming down this big tube. You like Salmicia out of Asteraceae? See, there's there's the old there's the old Akeen, see? Big white flower when it's going off. Just looks like a little boring rosette till you flip those leaves over and oh, you see those bright white waxy and hairy abaxial surfaces right there. See that Salmicia is see quite a few Salmicia in Tasmania too. See, this is kind of the stuff they got down here. This is some of the stuff they got. They got all these different scouring pads, brushes, stuff to get your bunions off, cosmetic tools and appliances, whole bunch of lichens. Got more of that Veronica again. I don't know if that's salicifolia or what, but either way, you know, it's just a big cosmetic grab bag for your Etsy store down here. Who's this? Is that Astelia or more Salmicia? I think that's Salmicia. Lots of nice lichens, though. But you see all that scoria. You know what scoria is, don't you? Does it make you hot? Look at this. They even got epilobium. Ona Gracie, even the primrose family. You like epilobium? Nice. Look at how those fruits split open. Those inferior ovaries splitting open longitudinally. I bet there's four four sides to that as they split open. You got opposite leaves. You, you got the couple native fuchsias here too, which are in the same family, except they're trees. Now, see, this ain't the place you want to be standing if the thing blows, because you just get a big avalanche and probably a lahar and some other stuff coming down that's not going to feel too nice when you get smacked in the face with a 1,000 degrees Celsius uh, piping hot gases and rocks, you know. does look nice right now, though, so you could stand there for a little bit, but don't, don't stand there too long. Hey, Alan, can you answer me a question real quick? Do you like your gases when they're piping hot? How do you feel about it? Of course, yeah, it's... Kind of lame when they're not, actually. Obvious bird dispersal on those fruits. Look at those bright red berries. Or are they droops? Is it just a single site, single seed inside? Nerterra is the genus there. Coffee family, Rubiaceae. And they like growing up high. See that? So that whole wall, there's probably lots more of that Nerterra on that wall of andesite over there. With a whole bunch of other stuff. Look at this lycopod, huh? You can see it's releasing all the spores. Ooh, 
Diphasium scariosum. Used to be in a genus Lycopodium. Was it Lycopodium or Lycopodium? Anyway, it's still Lycopodiaceae. Real cool. It's a lot of cool lycopod diversity. Look at that sporophyll. Oh, look at those lycophylls. Look at those tiny leaves dumping out all the spores. Nice. So, you know, not much in the way of vegetation. What they do have is nice, but it's not, you know, I'm not going nuts here with banger diversity. Got a species of Veronica, another species of Veronica, probably Salicifolia. Got Look at it, Forestera tenella stylidiaceae, another member of Asterales, growing out of a moss bed. Not flowering, of course, but there you go, you know it's there. Taking on that uh, rosette form, creeping along the ground, like so many plants here. You also got this, I believe this is a Dracophyllum, Jesus Christ. I don't know if it's that one we've been seeing that's just kept short because of the alpine environment or what, but. Look at it, see that, you can see where everything's devegetated for the pasture land over there. Wonder what it looked like 400 years ago. So curious. Remember, Europeans didn't really uh, get established here till I think uh, earlier mid 1800s. But all that used to be forest down there. Got that Brachyglottis, Eliagnifolia over there, nice Senecio member, Asteraceae. You got this Chianoclua rubra. You got, I see an Astelia over here too. I don't know, there's one down there. See with those elongated monocot leaves. Here's one right here. Nice, but not a lot going on. You got a couple blechnums in there too. See that? There's that the Astelia. All right, very species rich guy. I wonder who studies those. I guess it's fun up to a point. And then there, shrouded in mystery and shrouded in, in fog, is the anacidic lava cone. Now, being so steep, you know, it's uh, pretty hazardous. So I don't know, you know, they got all this stuff rigged up to bring stuff up there, you know, asses food whatever but at some point it's all gonna go downhill and you know in a lahar but uh i really do love volcanism and i love subduction zones they create a lot of cool terrain despite all the earthquakes and how the earth's oceanic crust gets recycled continental crust don't get recycled so think about that next time you have a shitty motel six breakfast huh anyway that's all i got for you this evening we're gonna go try to get banned from the lodge that's behind me and uh have a great night go fuck yourself bye